Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to prepare salts and this video will just give you a very broad overview of the three different methods we use to prepare salts and how to choose which method to use to prepare a particular salt. In subsequent lessons, we will then go into the details of each method and the rationale behind the procedures that we carry out. So let's begin. Before you actually start to do salt preparation, it is important that you know this solubility table very well. And this table just summarizes whether different salts and different compounds are soluble or not. So a, a very quick recap, okay, here are the solubility rules. And it is important you know this by heart so that you can decide later on which method to use because one of the criteria is based on their solubility. At this point of time, the term salt is not something that is new to you because you have learned that in the chapter of acids and bases. So pause the video and think about what kind of reactions you have learned before that give rise to salts. Okay, the first one would be the reaction between an acid and a metal. And in this case, it gives salt and hydrogen gas. So for example, hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc to form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. The second reaction that we have learned before is the reaction between an acid and an alkali. For example, sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate and water. And last but not least, we have the reaction between an acid and a carbonate to form salt water and carbon dioxide. So an example would be nitric acid and copper 2 carbonate to give copper 2 nitrate plus water plus carbon dioxide. So in this chapter, we are going to think about different methods to prepare these salts. Okay, and given a particular salt, you must be able to tell me what reagents to use and what method to use. So if I were to ask you how to make the following salt, zinc chloride, we usually break it into two because the salt consists of a cation and an anion. The anion usually comes from the acid, while the cation can come from various sources, for example, the metal, the metal hydroxide, the metal oxide and the metal carbonate. So for salts like zinc chloride, we know that we can react acids with something to make this salt. So this is what we call reactions with acids. So it doesn't matter which I use, whether I use zinc, I use zinc hydroxide, zinc oxide or zinc carbonate, any one of these plus HCl will give me zinc chloride. Okay, let's look at another example. Copper 2 chloride. Again, applying the same principle, we split it into half. The chloride means that I will need hydrochloric acid. Okay, and this time, copper ion can come from the metal, the base, or the carbonate. So let's just list down the following here. But this is a special case because you will recall that copper is rather unreactive. So the metal itself will not react with an acid. So for this particular case, we cannot use copper metal to react with hydrochloric acid. But we can use copper 2 hydroxide, copper 2 oxide or copper 2 carbonate. So the reactivity of the metal is also important. Look at another example, sodium chloride. Okay, chloride now you will know it comes from hydrochloric acid, but what about sodium? Again, we can list down the possibilities, but this time you won't want to react sodium with hydrochloric acid because this reaction will be very dangerous and explosive because sodium is very, very reactive. So for different uh, kind of salts, we will have to consider whether the reagent we want to use is suitable or not. One more example, silver chloride. Okay, I could consider the following again, okay, like reacting silver with hydrochloric acid, but again, you remember that silver is unreactive, therefore silver does not react with hydrochloric acid. What about the rest? Do they react? Well, it is possible, but there is a problem now because silver chloride is actually an insoluble salt. So you may ask, so what 
if it is insoluble. Well, we run into a problem when we are making an insoluble salt and the starting regions are so insoluble. Okay, let's look at this diagram here. If let's say we were to choose to use silver carbonate, right? Silver carbonate based on the solubility table is an insoluble substance and we can draw it like that, insoluble, okay? And when you put hydrochloric acid in, well, there will be a reaction that takes place because the carbonate does react with an acid. But then the problem here is when you form silver chloride and silver chloride is also insoluble. So what will actually happen is that the insoluble silver chloride will start to form because the reaction takes place at the surface. And once it is formed, it's, it's so, it is sort of like a protective coating okay, that uh, prevents further reaction between the carbonate and, and, and the acid. So this reaction will stop after a while and the reaction will not go to completion. So then, if all these are insoluble and silver does not react with acid, what can we do? Well, it turns out that for insoluble salts, we need to use a different method called precipitation. So it is for insoluble salts that we cannot use an acid plus something else kind of reaction. So the moral of the story, we have looked at uh, different examples, is that it all boils down to two things. Number one, whether the salt is soluble or not, and whether the starting materials are actually too reactive, for example, in the case of sodium, or in the case of copper that is too unreactive. So to choose a method, these are the two important things to bear in mind. Okay, so for soluble salts, generally we can mix an acid with something else, whereas insoluble salts, we use a method called precipitation, where we mix two aqueous solutions. Well, you might ask me, okay, so now there are so many different kinds of salts. How do I know which method to choose? Because that it seems like there, there are a lot of things to consider. Actually, we can just summarize your decision making into two questions. Okay. Um, firstly, we ask ourselves whether the salt we want to make is soluble or not. Okay. And this one you must know because you can just tell very simply from the solubility table. So, if the salt is insoluble, we use precipitation. Okay, if the salt is soluble, we ask another question, whether it is a group 1 or ammonium salt. If yes or no, we arrive at different conclusions. So for soluble salts that are not a group 1 or ammonium salt, we will use the reaction with acids method. And for group 1 and ammonium salts, we will use titration. So at this point of time, all you need to know is if I give you a particular salt, are you able to choose a method to use? Okay, these are the three different methods. Okay, over here, I have different salts here. Okay, and this is the, the flow chart that we use to, to make our decision. So I want you to pause the video and think about where you will place each of these salt in the flow chart. Okay, based on whether they are soluble or not. Okay, pause the video, work out the answers and we'll go through in a while. Okay, let's start with potassium sulfate. Okay, here. So potassium sulfate, the first thing we go, is it soluble in water? Yes, okay, we'll go to here. All right. So if it's soluble in water, we need to ask ourselves whether it is a group one or ammonium salt. Okay, so it is a group one salt because potassium is in group one, so therefore it is titration. Okay, let's work on the next one, silver nitrate. Okay, is silver nitrate soluble? Yes, because all uh, nitrates are soluble. So we come here. Is silver in group 1? No, neither is uh, an ammonium salt. So silver nitrate will use this method. Okay. Barium sulfate, all sulfates are soluble except barium, calcium and lead. So this brings us to this method. Okay, lead 2 chloride is also insoluble, so straight away precipitation. Okay, 
ammonium chloride is soluble okay so yes it is an ammonium salt because ammonium chloride so I'll put it under here and then zinc chloride is a soluble salt okay but it's not a group 1 salt so I'll place it here so ask yourself at this point of time are you able to classify the salts into the various method to use if yes excellent and we can move on we talk about the first method first and we're going to show you how to choose the reagents to use okay so for precipitation for example silver chloride okay so very simply we'll break it up into two okay so we need silver something plus something chloride so for all precipitation reactions we need to mix two aqueous solutions one containing the cation one containing the anion okay so break it up like so so think about your solubility table silver what is actually soluble well we could use silver nitrate because all nitrates are soluble then ask yourself what chloride is soluble sodium chloride is soluble yes i can use that i can also use potassium chloride i can also use ammonium chloride so as long as it is soluble this is soluble it will work okay so for precipitation this is the method we use to decide what reagents to choose so silver chloride we can use silver nitrate and sodium chloride if we change it to barium sulfate then we can choose barium nitrate and sodium sulfate again these two are all soluble so for precipitation both starting materials must be soluble okay if we come to the second method which is the reaction with acids okay for example zinc sulfate okay then the anion will always come from the acid so sulfate means i need sulfuric acid and then the cation will come from the metal the metal oxide the hydroxide or the carbonate okay so this will apply to all uh, soluble salts except your spa salts method number two okay take note about special cases like silver nitrate and copper 2 sulfate okay these are soluble salts but you cannot react the metal with the acid because these are unreactive metals okay and over here these are spa salts so we cannot react a metal with an acid we must do titration okay because they are very, very reactive and in titration we use an alkali with an acid okay for the last method titration uh, titration we will need the use of a burette and a pipette and these are apparatus that you know you fill with an aqueous solution okay so both your starting reagents must be in an aqueous solution form for example if we want to make a sodium sulfate again we break it up so now the cation will definitely come from an alkali in this case sodium hydroxide so most of the time it must be a hydroxide and for the anion it comes from the acid so sulfate would come from sulfuric acid okay what about ammonium chloride many students get stuck when they see ammonium salts because they forget that actually there is a reagent called aqueous ammonia so in ammonium salts the ammonium ion would come from aqueous ammonia which is an alkali and the chloride which is the anion comes from hydrochloric acid okay so again this is a neutralization reaction we can titrate aqueous ammonia with hydrochloric acid again it forms salt and water but in this case the equation is a bit special we do not see water in the equation so now let's conclude our introductory video we have three methods of salt preparation and for precipitation we need to mix two solutions okay containing the the desired ions so one containing the cation one containing the anion for reaction with acids we react uh, acid plus metal acid plus base acid plus carbonate but take note that when we react an acid with a metal we cannot use metals that are too reactive or too unreactive in the last method which is titration we add an acid and an alkali alkali meaning a hydroxide most of the time would be sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and don't forget if you want to make ammonium salts, we will use aqueous ammonia. 
All right, so this is just a very broad and very brief overview of the different methods of salt preparation. Hopefully, it gives you a better idea of which method to use. And to reiterate, two very important things that you need to know are number one, the solubility table. And number two, using this flowchart to decide which method to use. Thanks for watching.